Today, we will discuss a paper from an IEEE magazine, an energy efficient and spectrum efficient wireless heterogeneous network framework for 5G systems. Day by day, we see an evolution in the mobile networks. Starting from the first generation in 1980, we are now awaiting the arrival of the fifth generation mobile networks. The first generation mobile networks were introduced in 1980. It provides speeds of up to 2.4 kbps. It used analog signal. The first generation mobile networks were having different problems such as poor voice quality, poor battery life, large phone size and no security. After the first generation, the second generation mobile network was introduced. The second generation used digital signals. Its data speed were up to 64 kbps. It provides various features such as text messages, picture messages and multimedia messages. Requirement of strong digital signals was a drawback for the second generation mobile networks. In addition, they were unable to handle complex data such as videos. Between second generation and the third generation, the 2.5G was introduced. They provide features such as web browsing and email services. They provide speeds of the range 64 to 144 kbps. The third generation mobile networks introduced data transmission speeds of 2 mbps. It provides features such as high speed web browsing, video conferencing, 3D gaming, and mobile TV. The fourth generation mobile networks are capable of providing data speeds of up to 100 Mbps. They offer high security and high quality of service. With the introduction of the state-of-the-art fifth generation mobile network, the world is going to witness an ultra-high speed data rate of 1 Gbps. From first generation to the fifth generation, an exponential increment in the data rates can be observed. Day by day, there is an increase in the number of mobile users. In addition to this, it needs higher data rates to satisfy the requirements for online gaming, video streaming and mobile computing. These applications are highly sensitive to delay. To satisfy these needs in the current state of the art technology, either the radio power can be increased or the number of remote radio nodes can be increased. Any of these methods will increase the power requirements. Using more power means an increase in the carbon footprint. Thus, an increase in power contributes to the greenhouse effect. Due to the tremendous developments in the field of wireless communication, there is a huge increase in the demand for spectrum. The useful spectrum is limited. This fact leads to spectrum scarcity. According to FCC, even under these circumstances, the maximum spectrum efficiency in the current state-of-the-art technology is only between 15 to 35 percent. So the spectrum needs to be used efficiently. Cell sizes will have a major impact on the power requirements in a wireless network. Studies show that the power requirement can be greatly reduced by choosing a smaller cell size. 
studies also shows that the radio access nodes are the most power consuming component in a wireless network. So we need better data rates at low power and with the minimum spectrum. How cell splitting reduce power requirement? To answer this question, we should first analyze the cell architecture. In case of large cells, high power radio nodes are placed at the cell center. Direct transmission of signals to large distances can cause serious transmission losses because of signal attenuation and fading effects. In addition, there is a large possibility of losing line of sight with the mobile unit. To overcome this, large signal power is required. There are serious limitations for this solution. Alternatively, cell splitting can serve better in this scenario. Now the question is, to what level we can do cell splitting? If the cells are very small, a moving mobile unit can get affected. The unit often needs to switch to new nodes. This introduces an overhead of multiple handshakes. A combination of different cell sizes can serve better in this scenario. Considering all these aspects, researchers are now focusing on a network that can use different power levels for transmission. Headnets make use of multiple types of access nodes in a wireless network. Headnets offer low power requirement and reduced greenhouse effect. Heterogeneous networks offer high spectrum efficiency better energy efficiency and quality of service. In addition to the conventional high power antenna, headnets introduce low power antennas. The high power antenna can serve a larger geographical area and the low power antenna can serve a comparatively smaller geographical area. The traditional networks use high powers for covering larger distances. This can cause serious transmit power losses. In heterogeneous networks, the low power networks serving smaller geographical area can serve mobile units in its vicinity. A number of these low power networks can be used to effectively reduce transmission losses and to achieve better data rates and thus the connectivity can be established in a better way. The high power networks can serve mobile units in its close vicinity. In contrast with connecting to distant HPN, connecting to a nearby LPN can reduce power requirement for the mobile unit and thus offers a prolonged battery life. In traditional mobile networks, each antenna is connected to the central gateway. But in heterogeneous networks, there is no need to connect each node with the gateway. Instead, the low power nodes can connect with a high power node and the high power node can connect to the central gateway. The mobile units in the low power network can get signal from HPN and LPN. If the mobile units rely on only downlink power for connecting to the radio node, always it gets connected with the high power node. On the other hand, if the mobile unit relies only on the uplink power to connect to the radio node, it may get connected with the low power node but strong interference may occur during downlink from high power node. To avoid these situations, mobile units in heterogeneous networks should consider both uplink and downlink power. 
the signal from high power nodes can extend into the low power network. This can cause interference. To overcome this problem, researchers introduced an idea of using multiple frequency in the same radio node. The frequency band F is subdivided into two parts, F1 and F2. A parameter beta is used for this division. The first band F1 uses beta times F and the second band F2 uses 1 minus beta times F. Keeping beta value less than 1, the previous single frequency band can now serve as two different frequency bands. One band is transmitted at a low power compared to the other. A factor alpha represents the reduction factor. For better optimization of the technique, alpha and beta are to be chosen properly. In a traditional network, nodes are statically allocated with a baseband. In heterogeneous networks, a coordination is maintained between different nodes participating in data transmission. With such cooperation, the pool of baseband can be dynamically shared and can make a better utilization of the resource. This can improve the spectrum efficiency of the overall system. Heterogeneous networks use overlaid cells. Nodes from different layers have different transmission powers and are overlaid on each other. Cell edge users experience the highest impact from multi-layer interference. Each layer may need to give up some resources in a coordinated fashion to improve performance. Researchers are now considering the possibility of using L different layers. It can offer better data rates and improved resource usage at the cost of complexity. Such works may allow us one day to achieve speeds of the order of terabytes per second. Now it's time to conclude our discussion. So we found that heterogeneous networks incorporate nodes of different power levels. By doing this, the power requirements can be brought down. And this improves the energy efficiency. The heterogeneous networks use overlaid cells and cell splitting. This improves the spectrum efficiency and quality of service. Thank you for watching.